JD here and today we've got something a little bit special so before we calibrate and before we take her up and we start flying her around let's have a bit of an in-depth look at what this is this is the Ryze Tello this is powered by DJI technology I think it takes a bit of its look from the DJI Spark that dips in the front ever so slightly and then down at the front we have a 720p camera capable of 5 megapixel photos and 720p video at 30 frames a second. There's a little status indicator light as well next to the, next to the lens. As we work our way back towards the drone we have the battery compartment. The battery just sits in there. It is a 3.8 volt 1100 milliamp hour battery. Over to the left hand side we have a charge port and over to the right hand side we have the on and off button as well and also underneath this drone we have Intel Technologies vision system or should I say rather it is controlled by Intel's technology uh, the CPU inside here is a 14 core CPU and here she is and I like this I like the style of it I like the weight of it everything so far seems quite positive uh, now, from a design perspective, it's nice, it's light, it is. it seems really well built, it seems really sturdy. The vision system as well that I was speaking about in the overview is just here. So it's a little bit similar to what we saw in the Spark originally. Uh, now this is just controlled by Intel's pure 14 core CPU. Uh, and also not to forget, you can program these, uh, these drones using either Scratch or using the Tello SDK, whichever you prefer, whichever you're used to. So there we are folks, so I tell you what, that's a little overview, let's calibrate her and then let's get her up in the air and see exactly how she does. And here we have it, so what we're going to do for the second is because it's controlled via a smartphone, what I'm going to do, just turn her on, yeah she is on, lovely, and then I'm going to hopefully connect to the Wi-Fi and then from that point we are going to set up yeah, there we go, Wi-Fi, open Wi-Fi network. I do wish they would lock these down a bit and just give you a bit of a password. Um, right, okay, Tello. Right, let's open this up. Let's have a little look. That was what I was testing in the house beforehand. Let's open up again. There we go, that's a little bit better. So I don't want to download that update yet. Okay, so here we have it. So as standard, it is calibrated as you, when you get it anyway. You can recalibrate it by going into the settings and doing quite a little bit of work in order to calibrate it. You have to take off the propellers and ensure that everything else is uh, unobstructed and follow, I think it's three or four different steps to go through. For today, what I'm going to do is take her off and see how she does as standard. When we come to do the indoor flight, I'm going to go through the calibration a little bit more when I have my tools at hand. So for the second, what I'm going to do, we've got video. Yeah, there we are. I'm just going to take off and then we're going to see exactly how she does. So slide to take off. So that takeoff is very reminiscent of DJI. Obviously it is powered by DJI. So therefore you are going to have little things that you notice. The motor whine as you start off when it goes boom, boom, boom and it starts off. That's very reminiscent of DJI. This seems quite nice. You can see it is really precise with its vision system underneath. It really is hovering incredibly well. Now obviously with barometer you do get the barometer will move with the breeze. Today we have a breeze coming in at one and a half miles an hour and it's coming from my right and it's barreling through coming in from this direction and it's going right down there. And as you can see she's not trying to forward motion or anything like that. She's just hovering exactly where she is. Let's take her up a little bit, a little bit of throttle. Now let's stand in front of her, let's do a couple of selfies and let's see how this goes. I just stood in the dip there. Right, okay, so, selfie number one. For what I can see just from walking in front of the camera, the camera is having a little bit of difficulty in showing me a very smooth picture. It is image stabilisation as well, so whether it reckons I'm not that stable, that would probably be a fair assessment. But it did take quite a while there for the, um, for the, for the video to change. Let's record a little bit of video, let's take her out. Now this is on low speed mode, it's very precise in low speed mode, look at her. Very, very precise indeed. And what I mean by that is exactly, well exactly as I say, She's just following a very particular line. She's not... 
Okay, so pretty much I just hit my full Wi-Fi signal. I didn't bring my repeater with me today because I wanted to see exactly how this would do directly out of the bat, uh, sorry, out of the box for ev for basically the majority of users. So you can see the little green LED status light at the front of the Tello. I'm going to just walk around with it a little bit as well just to ensure I stay within this Wi-Fi signal range. I will be getting a, tra a, a transmitter for this, most definitely. Okay, let's park this up here. Let's stop video recording. Now, let's try out some of these features. So, flight mode, throw and go, 8D flips. So, slide the, on the screen to flip up, into an, up to eight different directions. Tap the X on the screen to exit in an emergency. Okay, so we get a little box in front of us. Inside this box, we can just move to the left and she flips, move to the right and she flips to the right. And it's, it's, it's very, very quick as well. See if I can get some video recording as I do this. Flip to the left. Flip up. Flip down. And she seems. Oh, that, there we go. <laughs> That seems pretty fun. Okay, let's bring it down a little bit. Perfect, so let's hit the cross and come out of that. 8D flips. Up and away, record a short video flying upward and backward. Let's do circle. Record a short video while flying in a circle. When using circle, fly in an open area without obstacles. Tap on the X to exit the screen. So here we go, she's flying in a circle. I'm gonna sort of, I should have set myself up a bit better for this before I started off. Now she is most definitely flying in a circle here and she's circling around and it's remarkably smooth. Look at her. Remarkably smooth. <laughs> and again, will she just stop after one revolution I wonder or will... Yeah, after one circle that's it, she stops there and the video that's automatically being recorded from the circle stops as well. Right, let's try another flight mode. So let's go 360 bounce mode. Automatically fly up and down within 0.5 to 1.2 meters of a flat surface below the aircraft. The aircraft automatically flies up and down within 0.5 to 1.2 meters of a flat surface. Tap the X icon to, to exit. So this will... <laughs> I've never, ever, ever seen a <laughs> Oh, that is funny. I don't know why. That is brilliant. Why would you ever need that? That is excellent. Look at <laughs> Oh, bless you, little Tello. Right, okay, let's stop that. That was bounce, where she quite literally just bounces, as you saw, up and down on the spot. Now, there are a couple of other flight modes on here that I want to, I want to try out. Uh, one of them being... Uh, 360, or oh, sorry, what's it called? Up and away, isn't it? Uh, up and away, but I don't know. Record a short video while flying up and backward using the flying away. Flying in an open area without obstacles. Now, I may have to tap out of this because I am only on Wi Fi signal and I don't want it to fly too high and obviously go out of range. So, if I start, then back up she goes. I'm going to watch this Wi Fi signal. It's dropping, dropping, okay, exiting out. That's still, that's really nice. Some of these really nice DJI features are available on the Tello. Okay, let's see if I can alter her speed mode to fast. Flight mode enabled fast. Now, oh, look at this, we're in race mode now. The, early, the little analog sticks on the uh, controller are now blue. Wow, hello. <laughs> this isn't a bit more responsive. She dips, she flies. <laughs> now, obviously, how jarring that was for the second is not down to the down to the quadcopter it's down to me i am pretty useless when it comes to uh smartphone um when it comes to smartphone control and at the same time i want to ensure that i stay within signal range so some of these movements folks i'm afraid are going to be quite jarring <laughs> still she's got quite a nice range out of Wi-Fi signal, back in Wi-Fi signal. Oh, now we've got a flashing red LED. No doubt that has actually burnt up quite a bit of battery. Yes, we have a battery warning. 
to let us know that we are out of out of battery or at least get it there now I'm doing three meters a second in fast mode by the look of it yeah 3.2 does vary in a straight line 3.5 that's actually really quite quick for a little uh, little brush motor here at least I believe they're brushed they certainly don't sound like brushless oh Oh, that was a little bit of a strange sort of wiggle it did there. Okay, slow. Let's go back into slow mode and see if we can eke out a couple of extra minutes of battery from this little guy. <laughs> now, charging was quite long and quite laborious. Um, I th believe I stopped my stopwatch and it was about 2 hours and 45 minutes of charging. And that was just from a standard 5 volt uh, USB powered hub not connected to a, uh, to a to a computer but just connected to a standard three uh, three pin socket wall, wall socket there right well all in all I like this I gotta see exactly what the what the video looks like but uh, this does beg the question and something I've often thought about with this little guy is this a really expensive toy grade quadcopter or is this a really cheap professional grade quadcopter this is something that I'm asking myself because everything about this for the minute in her flight camera aside put that aside everything about his flight and its flight modes its dynamics off they do remind me a hell of a lot of the spark and that is a professional grade quadcopter and then when you look at the camera, you have a 720p camera. Okay, it would be nice to have maybe recording at 60 frames a second. But I'm, you know, obviously just looking at exactly what we have got as well. Recording at 30 frames a second is damn impressive. If it is good quality 720p and if that lens is of pretty good... Oh, low battery warning. She's landing herself. And it's quite precise. Look at that. Land as soon as possible. Now, she's... Does she require me to take over here? Yes, down and then land. Okay, maybe that grass was a little bit too long to actually be landing there. Be wary of that, folks. There is a bit of a, a little bit of a uh, distance between the landing sprig and below and by the uh, by the motors. But still, be, just be a little bit wary of it. Fortunately, this grass is quite low, and where I landed was quite low. But I should have actually landed it on somewhere a little bit more. Um, a little bit less grassy we shall say right so what do I think well as I said in the video I do think that this is a very very nice quadcopter but I also do think it does beg the question is this a professional grade quadcopter for a very cheap price or is this a toy grade quadcopter for quite a quite a high price I'm going to say now I think it is quite a it is a toy grade quadcopter with professional uh, aspects to it professional features a good looking camera uh, now I, I want to see what the vi what the video is like in this so you may see some text across the bottom of the video uh, I want to actually have a little look at it first before I say oh yeah that was great um, now as for battery life it rated 13 minutes now bear in mind we went through I think every single flight mode we um, I hovered her in the air for a good three minutes before we actually took her out uh, we used a lot of photo, we used a lot of video, uh, so all in all I managed to look at ev most of this, this particular quadcopter on one charge. Now I will be getting a controller for this and then seeing exactly what she can do at a higher height, uh, but for the minute I am really taken with her. I think this is going to go in my bag with my Spark, I really think this is something that you should look at uh, getting if you haven't already. Now she is an indoor-outdoor quadcopter, but today we have one point five mile an hour wind as registered on my windometer and no problem i felt safe i felt in control i felt there was no danger at all with this but also what i must stress is that this is an 88 gram uh, quadcopter and that if the wind is too high she's gonna go folks she's gonna fly away and you're gonna lose her um now 
with all this the next test we're going to do with this is going to be in a little while it's going to be an indoor flight test and just seeing how she does in an indoor environment and then uh, hopefully it's going to be the same as outdoor uh, and hopefully it's going to be just as fun as well so there we are folks thank you ever so much for watching and listening i've been jd you've been fantastic as always if you haven't already please like and subscribe hello and welcome to all the new subscribers i hope you're enjoying the channel so until next time my friends